what are some of the um, the other big or small projects that NAGCO has been involved with in, say, the last decade or so? Okay, so a while back, oh, there was the organic elevator. That was out in Arden. Uh, and I believe they ran for two years out there. And NADCO was a supporting uh, founder of it. Yeah. And the NADCO was able to, you know, give them a bit of cash to uh, do some of the preliminary work to get going and all that. And I, rem I actually ended up at a meeting way back then. Um, and they wanted, like, th it was set, set up in... Um, a committee group of some kind and they were having to make another big step in their project and they needed you know 50 grand and so my own involvement there was well you guys are all organic producers you need 50 grand form your corporation with five thousand dollar buy-in you now have 10 guys 50 grand you're you're moving yeah. so it was a 35 dollar fee to form the corporation they got their corporation formed and then they were ongoing. Organics is a very tough uh, business to get into. Yeah. Um, you know, people really like the idea, but if you look at a loaf of bread that's $2 and a loaf of bread that's $5, which one are you buying, right? Yeah. When it's worse for meat, organic meat is quite expensive compared to the already expensive steak yeah. that you're buying. So I, I believe it's quite highly regulated what, you yeah. Can, what is yeah, organic. Yeah, and it is. Yeah. And so organics was a very tough business to get into and and of course it did not survive but um, NADCO isn't about not trying to make things happen NADCO is about trying to get things no. going I mean you don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work all the well time. in the documents here um, there was a, a clothing factory that was to, a, gar a fabric factory here like they were going to make clothing right and uh, the uh, council at the time basically said no because they had already experienced the closure of the salt mine and what that did to the economy of Nipua. Right. Now, at, at the time, the decision not to go ahead, uh, according to the documents, was because we can't afford another one of those things happening. Would it have been a good idea to revitalize the town at that time? How many years would it last until offshore one dollar shirts started happening? You know, like right. Bangladesh factories or yeah, you know that sort of thing. Fast so, fashion is kind so of decimated. So it the would have event. ended up closing, but could it have got us through a, a time? Yeah, you know, don't know. I maybe it could have made a pivot into something else. Could have, yeah. Yeah, but and and that's the thing, you know, like you take what you what you're offered and see what you can make of it. Yeah, this rural training center. Um, we, you know, we have plans, but you need money to build those things. Yeah. And um, I would love to build it myself. I've got my stuff going with the hotel thing. So yep. um, I have to focus on that. But one big project at a time. No, <laughs> no. Financially, one okay. big project yeah. at a time. Personal finance. Yeah. But uh, for this, you know, like... Um, We'll make it work. Yeah. We'll get it happening. We got a lot of great people in this community and area, and there's a lot of people who would just like to see things happen, so they will step forward. Yeah. And they'll say, I'm here, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And no, if, peop if someone out there watching this wants to step forward and say, I have this great thing that I want to do, who do they talk to? What do they do? Uh, they can talk to any one of their counselors. A phone Marilyn crew at uh, town of Nipa. Marilyn says, "Hey, Marie, we got this thing happening. Can Nadco help out? Like um, Nadco can buy a piece of land and host a an entity, and that entity can apply to the the small business venture tax credit program, and mm -hmm. and then you can get forty five percent of your investment back through that. But it has to be first hosted by an entity like Nadco." Yeah. Not, like I was saying before, you have to have a host. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, um, where you can't get a group of people together in a safe environment, you can have Nad go take that same group of people and make it a safe environment. 
And that is what some things need just to just to get through that little seedling stage yep. until uh, they can facilitator flourish. to get the action going. Yeah. Is is NADCO also a kind of a repository for, for data at all? Um, for previous research that's been done for projects in town, that sort of thing? Well, they have done uh, studies and they are um, specific to, um, I guess, specific to two projects. And mm -hmm. so those studies, when they were done for a project like um, when the whole soybean thing was being done. So that, right. that wasn't just NADCO, but NADCO became a partner. Mm -hmm. So NADCO was a partner, you know, another community was a partner. So we represented this community. We partnered in there. We became, I guess, a shareholder. And we yeah. had EDO crew as our representative. So they, she represented NADCO and we did a resolution to, you know, for the authority in that. Um, I know, um, you know, feasibility studies get done and they are uh, hosted by the town um, and where NADCO can help out with that, sure. you know, we do what we can and, and you yeah. know, Maryland, even if it's just coming for ideas, we got a group of people from, you know, the yeah. region. Yeah. You now, know, given our rate of growth, how quickly do those things become out of date? Out of date in a very good way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, but that's, that's what it is If there's now. a need, there's probably more need going exactly forward. Exactly. Yeah. Like, um, okay, so the hospital has been announced. Right. Right? But there were a lot of projects that were in the works before that announcement was made. So, you know, there were only a few people that knew about that. And then because Premont Health, but I had a non-disclosure agreement. So you don't talk about it. Right. Right? and you don't get to use that information in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. So all these projects that got going were based on the existing situation. Now that the hospital announcement is made, the dates are there, yeah. that situation just got greater. Absolutely. And you know, the, what, what happened since then is Marilyn's phone has been ringing and she's had lots of people coming in wanting to do business in Nipawa. So, you know, keeping up to those is, is a hard thing. And a lot of that is confidential between our economic development officer and the entity. Yes. So it's a need to know basis. Yeah. And unless they need to have a certain amount of sewer and water going at a certain location, I don't need to know. Yeah. And I certainly, I've had her in the seat too. And there's things that she could not tell me about what was going on. Yes. Other than it's good things. It's a good thing. Good things are coming. Good things are coming. Um, so. How much, um, because it is involved with the four um, entities, the municipalities in the town of Nipah, is it really spread out evenly around the area or is it really more focused on, I, w I will say urban area, it's not really an urban area of Nipah, but um, that area? Well, uh, our rule of thumb and our rule of practice is, uh, you know, Maryland Crew is the economic development officer for the town of Nipah, right. but her boundaries don't extend to the town of Nipah, they are our region, yeah. right? And anything that we have coming by that is a regional thing, we don't have to plunk it inside the town of Nipah. It, yeah. A lot of things are actually better out in, in the rural areas. Yeah. And we, we work and we help out and, and, and do help out for the whole area. Mm -hmm. And we consider Minnedosa an area. Yeah. You know, and- Well, we partner with them on the, what's the big idea? Yeah, 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 but also um, during the flood, this, the, oh, this last flood. Okay, so we had we had seven. <laughs> I of hate our that workers. we have to specify which flood. Yeah, and that's some. But yeah. you know, so seven of our our um, summer staff were there helping with yeah. the sandbagging. Yeah. Um, our CAO, uh, Colleen Sanchitian, went and uh, spent an afternoon with the new CAO there to yeah. help out you know, help guide through things because she's got incredible freaking experience. Yeah, absolutely. We are so lucky. And, um, well, you know, of course, I'm sandbagging there, too, because yeah. I have buildings there. But, you know, there's a counselor from Minnedosa talking with a counselor from Rose there talking with a counselor from right. Nipah. 
And the community that was there, they even had Saskatchewan license plates on some of the trailers. Yep. So, you know, we are a rural region. We're not just a little community. Yeah. And like, you know, when I said Rorkton, you knew where that was. I, I did. <laughs> you know where Rackham is? A little fuzz, fuzzier in Rackham. Rackham. It's over by Onano. Oh, it's, of course. Yeah. yeah. And then there's Mantmore, Oberon, yeah. Cordova, you know. All these. Alboro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It exists. Yeah. But uh, all these places exist because we still have all our community-minded people who are yeah. still talking in those terms. And we have the younger people listening to them. Yeah. Which is called communication. I, I mean, I grew up up near Polonia, so. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Did you have a still? <laughs> are we still running? <laughs> no comment. Um, so then what are some of the other um, like historic projects that people maybe did not realize that had NADCO involvement? Hmm. Now I know we've touched on a few here, like the Yellowhead Center for instance. Well, um, I can only go from what the documents state, yeah. right? So NADCO had involvement in uh, the Yellowhead Center in some way, shape or form. Yeah. But to be quite honest, it's just a series of small little s steps to help other projects along the way. And a lot of it, um, you may not even realize that you're helping in a project. Yeah. You know, somebody's, you know, coming along with some ideas and, and it's not like you're having NADCO meetings, like for the, um, the 40 acre subdivision going over by the uh, water tower. Right. Um, you know, people are talking and you know, it's, this is what we do. And uh, you meet them in a, a different meeting and you're, you're talking about it. But because you're involved in that, go, you know stuff. So now all of a sudden there's people come to Nipwa from Toulon. Yeah. Right. And you know, my time with the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, I got, I got to find all that kind of stuff out, talk to, you know, fellows from Grandview and Gilbert Plains about something they're doing up there and, and sharing it with other people that you meet, not realizing that they've taken that information and done something with it, yeah. right? Or you simply make a connection where they can uh, get information they need. Yeah. Our uh, Lagoon project, um, so we I put that on a promotion video that was seen by uh, the, all the different municipalities in the province. So we had two other municipalities come visit and talk to Denis about, hey, how do you set this stuff up, yeah. right? And um, the whole idea, like I suppose coming down the pipe might, might be something where we are trying to repurpose our water mm -hmm. after it's treated in the lagoon. Yeah. So um, that, that would be a project that NADCO could um, start facilitating. Okay, so that might be the big one I can talk about maybe. <laughs> uh, so there's a, a possibility of a $200 million project which needs to be hosted by someone, but would involve communities around the province okay. as part of that project. So it doesn't mean yeah. that NEPWA would be doing everything, but uh, we would be making the project. And I'll, I'll just use, you know, the lagoon system and the wa uh, wastewater management and um, the refuse dumps, you know, evergreen technology kind of stuff. Yeah. Gasification, you know, we'll use that as, as the example, the right. fake example of what it could be, we could set up a project where we're doing all the, f the legwork and footwork to turn all our rural areas, facilities for waste management of it, whatever kind, yeah. into a more productive system right. that costs less and is a little more mobile, such mm -hmm. as the gasification unit should be on wheels. Yeah. 
right? Because you can pump that over to whatever other community. There are a lot of our communities that ship their garbage to like services one site that receives garbage yeah. to Eric's and all their garbage goes to it. But if that gasification unit was on wheels, we could whip it over to Ericsson, yeah. spend a, you know two weeks, whatever, yeah. go to Rossburn, do their garbage. You know, we could boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. And that gasification unit is another place where the area is sort of on the cutting edge of the, the these yeah. technologies. Yeah, now NADCO didn't host that. That was no. FCM, yeah. uh, Federation of, of uh, Canadian Municipalities. But um, we were part of that as a town in Yeah. So and so it was Mento Odana. Like the, the yeah. surrounding, um, there was a certain crew of yeah. surrounding municipalities that were involved. And, you know, we use the, the, the word NADCO, but in reality, it, we're just a bunch of counselors with our ears and eyes yeah. open. And NADCO is just there to be that governing body that's needed whenever yeah. it's needed. Yeah, to be the governing body when it's needed, but also to be those people that make those connections between other people. Yes. I think that's, I mean, we have some documents here. These are historical documents. Yeah, I say that as a precious sense. They've got, you know, sticky yeah. stuff all over them. Um, to say, you know, the mission statement, but I think we've just kind of summed it up quite nicely in our conversation. Because yeah. I came into this not understanding a lot about um, what NADCO, how the NADCO functioned. And now I think it can be summed up by those two things, is, is to be that entity that uh, funders and governments need and... Uh, to make those connections. All right. Do you know what HIPS is? HIPS fruit flavored syrups. No idea. Well, then, um, oh golly. See, I'm struggling with names lately. Uh, the Nadeau family. Yeah. Uh, when we moved here in 1972, the Nadeau family had the HIPS plant, which is, <laughs> I believe, the current building where the um, dry cleaners is now. Oh, really? Okay. I believe that was the HIPS plant. Anyway. Um, this is 1970, so this is yeah, the going Nadeau back a bit. Yeah, the family owned HIPS. And uh, what's Leonard's wife's name again? Oh, I can't uh, help you there. Leonard Nicholson. Oh, come on. Elaine was the sister. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, I didn't go to school with his wife. That's awful. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry. Brain drain. Yeah. But anyway, so um, that one I didn't read, but what was the entity? Oh, I've, I've changed the page now. Oh, you changed my page. It's on the, bot it's on the oh, bottom. Oh, you mean the West Park Place. Yeah, West Park Place is the next one I pulled up. Because I, yeah. I mean, I lived in West Park Place. Yeah. I know so all about that. These are all things yeah. that came out of the NADCO file. Yeah. So you asked for examples. That's why I handed there's that a, one. There's a pile of them there. Yeah. I, think, I, I had no idea that NADCO was involved in things I'd heard of and things I hadn't. Oh, yeah. I, I, I guess I kind of had it in my head that NADCO was a newer entity that maybe came about in, say, the 80s. And it's, it well, goes much uh, further back than that. Over the years, um, the original shareholders have come in and said, you know, you guys might as well have this because, you know, they... To form a corporation, you had to have shareholders, so they had a whole bunch of people for, I can't remember what the shares were worth, a buck or ten bucks or something like that, yeah. but they formed the corporation to start it off. And now they had that governing body that could move ahead and make things happen. Yeah. And over the years, the municipalities have, have uh, become that governing body and are still there to move forward. And the beauty of it is, NADCO will always exist as long as elected officials exist. Right. Because normally it's not 100% turnover. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there anything um, you want to make sure that people who are watching this in the community, in the area, in the country, understand about the work that NADCO does and what NADCO is? Well... A lot of people have pipe dreams about doing things and they come forward with great ideas and they have hoops that they have to jump through or they have stepping stones that might be a little rocky for them. You know, if nothing else, we're a group of people that can help uh, get them to the right connections to fill in the loopholes that they need or get them to Maryland crew 
or just to use whatever knowledge base we have to help them or get them to the people with the right knowledge. Thank you very much. All righty then. And thank you for making time to sit down with me today. <laughs> well, do I get to bring my guitar next time? You get to bring your guitar okay. anytime you like. All right. And thank all of you for joining us. We will see you again next time.